first of all, for those of you on the East Coast, perhaps your day is over teaching. So take a deep breath. Oh, let it go. That day's done. Uh, for those of you who still might have an hour of teaching or office hours or whatever your county is doing, it's okay. We're going to all get through this. This has been a truly tremendous year of challenge and growth and flexibility and Edulastic has been right there to fill in for a lot of us what we, we used to do with pencil and paper tests. And my focus is on using it to give feedback. I am teaching 100% virtual. I am teaching 100% from home. Um, so I ended last year, I was at a seminar when everything shut down. So I never got to say goodbye to my students. And I started this year virtually with virtual students who I've never met. So it's hard to build relationships with students when you don't see them. What I see is little circles with their initials and little avatars. And so I've actually gotten so I can identify different students by their avatars, but you still lack that connection, that ability to, to speak to a specific student, to give a specific student um, personally encouragement. My county uses uh, Teams. And in Zoom, you can send a personal message in the chat to a student. In Teams, you can't do that. So you can't send a, you know, a specific word of encouragement or correction to a student in the platform we're using. So I find that by being able to send that kind of personal communication in Edulastic, that's helping me make the connections that are so crucial so um, Jan, if you do the next slide, please. Um, this, I think on the picture on the left is how we would love to think that virtual learning is going on. The picture on the right, in my case, is frequently more realistic. Um, I, I still am in contact with my colleagues who are in the building and my county is trying to go back face to face with some students in the high school, but between outbreaks and the snowstorm coming, they still haven't gone back face to face. So we all have that persona that we put on for our students and then we have the reality. So if we can find a way to ease some of that stress, to make some of that stress less stressful, less anxious, so that we're not laying in bed at night, staring at the ceiling going, what do I do about? That's something that helps us all. So Edulastic allows you to give students specific feedback. Next slide, please. All right, there are two ways that you can do it. Um, when you look at the class board with the results of students, there's one place where you can click where you can give overall feedback. And this is a general comment. It might be something like you might want to go back and take a second look at the questions you skipped, or here's a video to help you with this concept that you missed or you can give question by question feedback. And this is what I find to be the most beneficial when you can, and I always address the students by name when I give them their feedback and it's my way of talking to them. So I'll say, Kristen, remember when we did this kind of problem in class, what do you, you know, what do you remember? And so th remember there's two ways, there's a general feedback for the entire assessment, and then there's a specific question by question feedback. All right, next slide, please. And these are some tips. What I like to do with feedback, obviously you don't want to or have to type original messages in every one 
if it's the same message for the same question. So I start with the student who scored the lowest score on the test. And I look at what questions they missed that other students missed as well. And I go through that student's mistakes. And if I come up with a general comment or a general instruction that I want them to do, then that can just be cut and paste into other students. You can change the name, but that way you can save a little bit of time. At the end, I like to double check that I have a comment with each partially correct or incorrect question, because that way we've set up a conversation. Um, I also have my students take an act, take action. I've created a form and you can create however you want to handle this, but mine has a column that says the question and a column that says the teacher's comment and a column that says action. And maybe it'll say rework the problem showing your work. Maybe it'll say look up and write the definition. Maybe it'll say, you know, redo this. My students rarely go back and look at their mistakes. This forces them to do that because that sheet is a separate assignment. So they have to go back and look at the question. They have to go back and look at what I said. And then they have to do something. They either have to redo it. They have to look up something. They have to you know, there's action that happens. So those are some things that I have found that are particularly effective in getting kids to look at their mistakes. And then they can write something like, you know, I, it was a careless mistake. Oh, the, the columns were the problem, the teacher's comments, and the action step whether it was write something, do something. And so I've also used a column that said, was it a careless mistake? Was it a concept mistake? Did you not understand what you were doing or did you just make a careless mistake? Um, so in these days when we aren't really talking, where some of us are not talking to live students, I have found that this is tremendously helpful in starting those conversations. Now I have office hours every day from 1.30 to 2.30 when my students can come from private tutoring. So maybe that's something I would put in the comment. Please stop by office hours and I'll help you with these problems. Just it's a way of establishing communication that we really don't have if for those of us who are not in the classroom.